Okay, our next speaker is David Kelb. David came from Atlanta to this nice weather we're having. So, <laughs> um, As director of the Machine to Machine Business Development at AT&T, David directs a team of business development managers within AT&T Business Service Sales. His team assists customers in deploying solutions in the emerging M2M marketplace. M2M solutions span several vertical industries, including telematics, healthcare, utilities, vending, insurance, and asset tracking. David is a 30 plus year IT industry veteran with the last 25 years in sales and consulting. During his eight years at AT&T, David has been focused on helping customers adopt mobility application solutions, and I'm sure you're gonna be even busier in the next eight years. Prior to joining AT&T, David began his career as a software developer in the healthcare and insurance industries. He then joined Ernst & Young as a management consultant specializing in hospital information systems. David has also worked for industry technology leaders Oracle, Sun Microsystems, and Netscape. David has held a diverse set of roles in sales, consulting, enterprise architecture, and business development. Throughout his career, he has primarily focused on assisting customers with the adoption of numerous forms of technology, including wireless, hardware, operating systems, networking, databases, development tools, and enterprise applications. Please join me in welcoming David Kalb. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor to be able to speak to you today. Uh, my, back, my talk today is going to be a little less on uh, the security side and more about the emerging market of the machine machine technology and, and what the impact is, that is going to have on business processes going forward. I'll also touch on architecture and security uh, subjects towards the end of it. Uh, one of the fun things I, uh, you know, my background has been in deploying applications throughout my career. One of the things I uh, observed here today is that my idea of attending a security conference is the people here are much better looking and well dressed than I, I kind of envisioned. I kind of envisioned a little bit of a, a, a little bit longer hair crowd and, and a little less uh, maybe some jeans and, and uh, worrying about cybersecurity. Uh, overall, uh, AT&T is deploying about uh, 1 million to 2 million devices, quarter over quarter, uh, connected devices. So it's actually the largest growing part of AT&T's new organic growth. Uh, the voice uh, user market, while it's been, uh, everyone has acquired a cell phone over the last year, last few years, uh, mediocric uh, growth, especially in the use of wireless data. The M to M market is really the future in terms of millions of devices being added to the, to the network. So hopefully you'll understand a little bit from my talk today about the, the changes in business process that are going to occur because of all these connected devices sensing different items and providing back information to, uh, in real time. So uh, just a quick definition in terms of, of uh, the Internet of th Things and defining what I mean by M to M. Uh, certainly the Internet of Things has been, uh, been uh, IP wired for many years. The difference of my talk here today is I'm talking about use of wireless technology, specifically cellular or uh, Wi-Fi, ultra-wideband, uh, uh, Zigbee, other types of wireless technologies that make it much easier to deploy these devices and to put these devices in many locations we wouldn't even have dreamed of uh, putting devices in the past. For example, storage tanks or cars, trains, planes, uh, pill bottles, uh, you name it, uh, almost anywhere, a storage bin, uh, you know, trash bins, any, anywhere you can put a wireless sensor uh, and wirelessly connect it to the network, we can now provide information. So the informational security aspects and concerns there with, a, with what I would say is a fairly immature technology are significant. And certainly I look for uh, experts like all of you in this room to, over, to, uh, to take a f focus on this area and be able to improve security over time. The other thing is I watched uh, the, the movie Fast and Furious, Furious uh, uh, the last, over, the, over the last weekend, and uh, certainly they had devices there that would defied some of the, uh, defied physics uh, overall, and the idea that, you know, maybe some of these things seem far-fetched, but uh, the real-time data that's coming back uh, from devices is, is just uh, mind-boggling. So it's now possible to do an awful lot of things that we wouldn't have done in the past. And for example, uh, the first one here, uh, the full life cycle of, of the uh, food uh, chain cycle, in terms of being able to take bananas in, uh, in Malaysia, 
put them into a container, in, in a refrigerated container, monitor them as they go through, across dirt roads, uh, being put on a, uh, a container, uh, a vessel, monitored all the way uh, to the U.S., and then monitored from that location to a dis distribution warehouse, and then uh, monitored to, uh, on the way to being delivered to, uh, to the grocery store. We now know what temperature those bananas were stored all the way through the, the life cycle change. Quite a difference in the amount of information, and uh, that business process is completely different. In fact, uh, it also finds a lot of deficiencies in that chain, uh, improves it over time. Uh, for example, mon you know, putting a sensor on, on, a, uh, on top of a uh, light pole to be able to monitor the traffic movement of highways, many different things that happen there. Um, you know, in terms of uh, the insurance industry, putting an OBD device into your car to actually monitor your driving habits so we can change and rate how policies are, are uh, managed in the future, what rate you actually pay. So certainly, all of these things are, are tremendous business models and are really going to change the way people uh, uh, do, uh, do business in the future. So we have this uh, paradigm that we talk about at at and in terms of these three uh, concentric circles here of being able to sense data on the network, being able to analyze that in real time, and then actually be able to take a response in real time as well. So some of the, the, the path of these cycles is collapsing, becoming much more real time over time. So there's some examples in here, uh, the vending machine industry. There are multiple sensors that can be put into a vending machine. A lot of us think of, you know, we probably had a credit card, we were able to buy a beverage. That's a wireless transaction that's going to be going over the, net, over the network. Certainly that uh, wireless credit card authorization has to go through all of the same security levels that we do uh, in the wired infrastructure in the world today. Uh, there, are, there are also sensors in that machine to know when that machine is broken. When do I need to send out a dispatcher to go out and repair that machine? Also, it, it's capturing the DEX data in that machine to know how many bottles of uh, Pepsi I'm selling versus how many bottles of Mountain Dew are in that particular machine. So when those, those, uh, uh, that beverage machine starts to be, uh, become empty or potentially the, uh, it needs to be refilled, I now don't have to send somebody uh, uh, out there every, every few weeks to go out and make sure that it's full. I, I can now actually in real time know when, when a certain beverage is empty and go out and replenish it. Uh, I can also know if that machine is uh, at the right temperature, or if there's something wrong with it, I can send out a, a dispatch someone to make sure that my, the, when you pull it out of the machine, it's at the right temperature uh, and uh, the best product I can give. An example down here in the bottom left is actually a, a shredder bin. Uh, before, people had to send somebody out there to, to empty those, no matter the, whether there was anything in that shredder bin or not. Now there's a sensor on the inside of that shredder bin that knows whether to uh, empty, empty that uh, and, and when it's full, I can send someone out and dispatch them in real time versus uh, having significant numbers of runs of people going out and emptying them uh, unnecessarily. So the other thing is, in the past, a lot of these types of uh, applications have been around for quite some time using wireless technology, but most of them because of the, the low latency, uh, I mean high latency, low bandwidth networks that we had in the past, a lot of these were small transactions. What the trend is today is to see applications that are much using much more uh, significant amounts of data. For example, surveillance cameras, uh, uh, all, all types of sensors that may be uh, capturing sound, a lot of different uh, amounts of data that are being passed. So a whole new set of applications is now available as we move to 4G networks. This is an example from the, uh, uh, but what happens when you en wirelessly enable a, uh, a heavy equipment manufacturing. We wouldn't think farming is a high-tech industry, but it, you, uh, I think you ought to think again because these uh, pieces of farm equipment have become so sophisticated. Farmers are now using uh, laptops to do crop planning. Uh, they're, they're basically uh, providing assistance uh, in the harvest. So when these machines are not set up correctly or need to be modified, I can actually, the uh, heavy equipment manufacturers can actually dial into these machines and actually do adjustments to them on the fly. They can also know uh, whether this machine is, uh, needs to be adjusted or repaired, uh, whether it's not running effectively. There's also information passing passed back to the engineering department to understand uh, you know, how is this machine actually uh, working and maybe I ought to re-engineer this this, uh, my future product to better serve my customers. 
So what happens here is when you go out to deploy these M-to-M -M solutions, a huge number of questions occur uh, in terms of battery life, uh, and certainly security is, is, is a definite uh, piece of that overall puzzle. How do I provision these devices? How do I manage them? There's nobody th a lot of times at these endpoints. It might be a, a donut on a wireless, on a uh, uh, wire, on a um, electric transmission line that no one can even really get to. Uh, so how do you manage control? How do you uh, secure these devices? And then typically they're not, uh, they don't tend to be uh, high, uh, you, high, uh, processing speed types of devices, or they don't tend to normally run uh, sophisticated operating systems, although that trend is starting to tr uh, change as we start to see more Linux types of devices, et cetera, uh, being deployed on the network. But so the, a lot of it's a, less, a lot of less security risk uh, given that the simplicity of these devices and the way the wireless operate, oper uh, network works in that most of these devices are only a client, and they send data up, and, and there's really no way to address them on the internet. You, a lot of times, the way uh, the, the, the setup was on these devices is actually to use an SMS message to uh, wake up the device if I need to. Otherwise, it, it typically pulls and sends information on a regular interval basis, or when a certain event condition occurs. So I talked about this a little bit of real-time event-driven enterprise. What we're seeing is that it's not just collecting data from the device. It's really there are back-end applications. Those back-end applications may be uh, addressed with a, a, a wireless device or a laptop device. Uh, there are also you know, people that are involved monitoring these devices in real time. So you have to look at the informational security picture from a much broader perspective than just how do I tr uh, secure the transaction going from one endpoint up to the application that talks to it in the, on the back end. So overall, the, the, the uh, merging model uh, in the industry looks something like this. Uh, what we're seeing is that early applications use kind of a, a custom development model where I had a very custom device and I had a very custom back app and ac application that used a custom protocol to talk between those two uh, entities. In the world uh, that we're seeing moving forward is much more of a platform as a service model. Uh, an application platform, and then also a service platform to actually enable the management, provisioning, uh, and device, the device management, the security of these devices uh, from an architectural standpoint. So from a, uh, the bottom level here, you typically have uh, devices with a, a wireless radio in it, some types of sensors included in it. Then that, that uh, application is then controlled by a service platform that allows the uh, the network provider, uh, the, uh, the customer, to actually mo uh, provision the network, provision the devices, and uh, turn them off and turn them on in, in real time. Also to be able to monitor things like this device is sending uh, much more data than I would expect over a period of time. So what, I, what, what should I actually do? I should maybe have an event that fires uh, I could, uh, and maybe notify someone or I could actually just shut that device down. Some, some, for some reason, this device was supposed to just send a few K of data uh, every couple hours, and now it's streaming back you know, a t lot more data than I would anticipate it. So all of that intelligence is built with a couple of platform uh, partners that actually AT&T partners with, a couple of companies called uh, Jasper, and then also a platform that AT&T developed called Enterprise On Demand. But I think that's a stakeholder. You're also seeing uh, many other players emerge in this space to provide a, a service platform for the actual de control of the device. On top of that, you would have a, an application platform. And many of these applications uh, use very repetitive pa uh, patterns. And there's really no reason to, to build these one-off applications and invent the, the wheel uh, over and over again to be able to go out and uh, invent all of this plumbing that needs to be built to just collect data off the network put that out to and then define rules and events that fire off uh, particular actions or, or notify other back-end applications when these events occur. So uh, what we've seen is a large number of players that a actually AT&T partners with many of these companies such as Exceda, SensorLogic, ILS, uh, and Sierra Wireless, to name a few, that uh, are built these M2M application platforms that will go out and do a lot of the device to asset uh, and asset to asset associations to, to be able to define the business rules in the platform and then also handle uh, what we see a lot with customers is I build one medical device and I may have used one particular piece of hardware 
but in the future I may build another medical device and, and those two devices have very different looking uh, protocols uh, delivering the data into the network. So attending what is happening is we're seeing the, the platform being able to build a generic layer, an interface layer that attaches to these devices and allows that data to be pulled up, uh, uh, rationalized or uh, you know, converted into a common format and then delivered to the back-end application platform so that these applications can be delivered much more rapid and then your investment is protected as you move to different uh, device models in the bottom layer. We're also seeing this is a little bit more on the service platform and some of the kind of capabilities that it provides. I talked a little bit about the alerting, but you also need the ability to do real-time diagnostics out to these devices. So you need to be able to uh, ping the device and see what is it currently uh, doing? What's its state? Is it connected to the network? Does it have an IP uh, connection? And then also be able to provide a historical look in terms of what, you know, what was the, the, the uh, transmission pattern of this device? If I see that the device is waffling on and off of the network, maybe I have a, a wireless uh, communication issue that I need to go out and address. So customers, since you, you need to have this kind of capability on the back end and you can't send someone out there or just call someone to say, you know, what's the, the status of this device, uh, tools like this are, are very important. Then to talk a little bit about more about from an architectural standpoint how uh, these devices are secured. Uh, typically, the model is again to use. Uh, you can either use dynamic or static IP addresses for these devices on the network. The, I think the more common model is to use dynamic IP addresses uh, and not to actually go out and connect to the device directly. For it to app act as more of a client device that will send data up on a uh, uh, an interval basis and provide uh, the, the service application platform to be able to take that data and do the right events. In fact, the more of the, the intelligence that you start to put into the device, uh, the less flexibility you tend to have. Certain situations uh, call for that. For example, if uh, uh, you know, I, I may need to have, if I'm tracking driving uh, behavior, I may need to have an accelerometer on that device to be able to uh, determine whether you know, that this is a hard break or this is a hard stop or if I'm making a, 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 an aggressive turn. So a lot of that processing needs to be there, but the less of that processing that occurs on the device and the more we put into the back-end application, uh, the more flexibility that I have. So the tendency is to just shoot up the raw data from the client device. And if the, client, if the device goes to sleep, uh, we, the tendency is to also use a, a, an SMS wake-up. In fact, what we typically do with SMS wake-ups is we don't put commands in the SMS. We put just a, an SMS with no data payload. So there's no uh, real issue in terms of being able to send some kind of data uh, payload in the SMS message and be able to uh, corrupt that device or uh, introduce a, a, a virus to it. Uh, on the back end, uh, in terms of going from the, uh, the wireless network, uh, what we've done is provided connectivity to our, uh, our customers uh, in a, essentially it's a private network if you want to look at it. There is a, when a device connects to the network, there's an access point name. And that access point name, if you use a standard uh, mobile phone, would typically be to provide you and drop you out onto the internet. What we've done with most of these machine-to-machine -machine communication implementations is we've required our customers to put in a frame relay or an MPLS connection back to their, their back-end uh, service and, and essentially by the access point name that's provisioned with the device, we can direct the traffic directly to their data center and never have it on the addressable internet, providing a, a much better, uh, much more robust uh, security model and eliminate a lot of the potential attacks that could occur on the network. So that's about all I have. Um, is, uh, I'm gonna move it on to see if there's any, any questions sure. people Excellent. might Thank have. Thank you. Time for questions. Oh, there's a question, okay, back here. Yeah, are any of these applications sort of a, in, a, in a price range or a cost that it would be applicable for the consumer market or is it all just businesses right now? Uh, the, the model is, you know, it has really changed. So for example, there's uh, many applications in the consumer space. Uh, there's actually a solution to, that goes on a pill bottle that actually um, 
uh, uh, knows every time you took a pill out of that the bottle. For a lot of the pharmaceutical companies, they want to make sure that people are actually taking the drugs that you, you are prescribed to them correctly. So uh, there's actually pet tracking applications with you know, a collar to put around your dog. So huge number of consumer type of applications in the marketplace. You know, the price points, again, are the business model is always there in terms of uh, the less data I can use, uh, maybe I can spend one or two dollars a month to provide a, a few, uh, you know, half a megabyte of data. Those kind of models are available. Uh, but you tend to price yourself out of the market when you start to go the very high use data, data applications uh, like video surveillance, at least until we get to more pervasive 4G networks on, uh, throughout the U.S. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, David. Excellent. Thank you.